Rock Solid Families wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions for sponsoring the Rock Solid Families podcast. Casey's has grown to be one of the largest and most unique garden centers and gift shops in the Cincinnati Tri-State area. Whether you are looking to take on that next landscape project or simply add a little home decor to your house, Casey's has you covered. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Call them today at 812-537-3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home. Welcome to the Rock Solid Family Podcast. This is Merle Hutchinson alongside of Linda Hutchinson. Hello, Linda. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I wish we had an exciting show today, <laughs> but we really kind of have a dead show. You know uh, what I mean? Ha, ha, ha. Not a very <laughs> lively topic. Not a very lively topic. <laughs> you know, but you know what, so though? People, people in the graveyard. People have probably Googled this topic mm. and have come across this, and this is actually a topic that we, you know, have in, been inquired by by before by mm-hmm. our clients or other people, and so it is. It's it's a very important topic, one that causes great fear and anxiety in people, and that is the fear of death. Thanatophobia. <laughs> have you ever heard of that? <laughs> Thanatophobia. 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 You got to put it in in there. (laughs) Thanatophobia. Yeah. Yeah. Versus necrophobia, which is the the fear fear of dying things or dying. It's like funeral homes and graveyards, things like that. I probably have more of that issue. Yeah. Me too. I probably have a necrophobia more than a thanatophobia. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hmm, there yeah. you go. So there yeah. you go. You learned a new word. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So we are going to tackle this word or this this idea actually, mm-hmm. because uh, whether they're little kids or whether they're mm-hmm. adults, um, there are people that have very challenging times to the point where it be- yeah. it can become a great um, generator of anxiety mm-hmm. and phobias just about the whole idea of dying you know what happens after death is it you know it is it darkness mm-hmm. and morbid or is it just all done and complete um whatever it is like the idea that i'm i i'm not familiar with it i don't recognize it mm-hmm. it scares us it's yeah. kind of like you know what's in the dark the unknown yeah but before we tackle that we want to thank our sponsors we want to thank casey's outdoor solutions and maxwell construction for their support of rock solid families podcast as well as rock solid families um if you don't know who we are or what we do we would love for you to check us out at rocksolidfamilies.org we are a faith-based coaching organization that works with individuals and couples and families in the greater cincinnati ohio area but really all over the country country, huh? And our, our Zoom, the opportunity of Zoom, which COVID kind of opened up for us, mm-hmm. has really opened up the opportunity to reach out and help families from wherever. So however you got a hold of this podcast or got connected with us, welcome. And we hope that something we say today or, or talk about today helps you and your family. Yeah. And just a lot of the other resources huh, that we have, mm-hmm. whether the blogs that we write or our Rock Solid Marriage mm-hmm. Program, mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of those different things. So if we can help you yeah. in the marriage or with an individual personal uh, situation. Um, and also, hon, you know, we, we talk coaching rather than counseling. Mm-hmm. Would you like to define a little bit what that is? Because sometimes people yeah. come in and they go, they, they refer to what we do as counseling. And right. so we often say, well, let's just clarify. Right. Yeah. And I'm, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Well, you know, I, I think of some great things <laughs> down there. And so it is very similar to counseling. The only exception is that as coaches, we do not do any diagnosis. Mm-hmm. And so we we don't do any treatment plans. We work with individuals and couples and families and what their goals are, where they're stuck. And we don't deny or apologize for the fact that we are faith-based mm-hmm. so that God and his word are included in what we do and our approach to helping you. And we don't shove it down your throat. So if, if this faith thing is kind of new to you or not really comfortable for you, we're, we're not going 
trying to like force it on you, but we're also not going to apologize for it because we believe that's where life transformation comes from. And that's really where right. the help that you need is going to come from. So yeah. yeah, that's a little bit of the difference between counseling and coaching. Yeah. I find myself referring to it a lot just because of the men I work with because of how um, women too, but men understanding, many men understanding mm -hmm. the coaching concept, you yeah. know, it's, uh, it's more assertive. Um, not that we're not going to look at the past, but mm -hmm. where are you today? Where do you mm -hmm. want to go? Let's get a plan. Let's go and drive that way. Yeah. So the assertiveness yeah. is a little bit different level. Um, so yeah, so it is a coaching and, and, and again, it's a faith-based coaching. And there's a, there's a place for both. So right. we're not, we're, we know how to stay in our lane and we refer often to a licensed therapist. If you have some early childhood trauma or some diagnosable mental health issue right. that we believe that is out of our lane, we will refer out. So we've done that before. We've also had doctors and, and therapists who have referred to us. So there's a place for everybody there. And there's definitely not a shortage of folks who are in need of some mental health help help and support. So, um, you know, if we can help you, please reach out. And I don't know if people that are listening know that we have an addition to our team mm -hmm. who is a licensed therapist, but she's come to us and she's joined our team as another one of our faith-based coaches. Right. And so Meredith Scudder has a lot of experience with trauma and attachment disorders. And so she comes to us with a really great experience base and education base or master's and her specialties are in areas that we see a need for. And so um, if we can help you, whether Murrow or I or Meredith, um, at Rock Solid Families, check us out at rocksolidfamilies.org. All right, very good. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into our topic a little bit today. Mm -hmm. So um, oftentimes, as we've talked about before, death is a very difficult subject mm -hmm. matter. And, you know, people have to wrap their head around how they're going to process that. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it can be very mind-boggling boggling to mm -hmm. little kids, you know, um, and it, adults. Yeah. Like what, but when a little kid like first sees somebody, that's why as parents, oftentimes we protect our kids mm -hmm. so that they don't see a kid in a coffin, like out of viewing or, mm -hmm. or visitation. And because they just don't comprehend like what the finality of that mm -hmm. means. And so there's a lot to do where you just don't assume mm -hmm. that people get it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so there's a processing that has to go through uh, yeah. to help people. Did you know that there's a study, there's studies out there that says that over 40% of people have some form or level of fear of dying mm -hmm. or death. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about almost half the population of our world today has some fear, whether they're kids or adults. And, and hun, men and women in their early 20s mm -hmm. seem to have the most intense fears. And so, you know, maybe it's due to an early brush with death or a death experience, maybe at the first time of a grandparent or a parent. Maybe it's due to feeling that panic of like, I don't have my life together and right, I, I'm not right. married married yet, or I don't have kids yet, or I haven't, I, I've paid all this money for this college education. I haven't started my career. And what happens if I die? Like, so I don't know why the intensity for that age, but those are some of the the things I hear when I've got a young woman coming into my office. Well, I don't you know? think it's coincidental that the frontal lobe is not mm. coming to maturity until it gets into its mid to late twenties. Mm. And what that means is there's a lot more mm. discernment going on. Oh, In yeah. other words, people actually being able to think about, mm. you know, cause and effect and connections. Mm -hmm. And whereas before then we, you're kind of considered immortal in our own mind, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, wow, I, uh, nothing, especially we see this with a lot of young, adolescent teen boys mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I, I can't be hurt. And yeah. so, yeah, so I don't think that there's a coincidence there. I think that that's just the awakening of maturing and going, mm. Mm, I need to be a little bit more careful, more aware, and life, <laughs> life does end mm -hmm. as, as you know it in the physical sense. So, yeah, so, and again, fear of death could be just one of many prolonged and intrusive fears and thoughts that you have. And so it, it may be for you, it's a symptom of a deeper anxiety or depression issue, mm -hmm. okay? And that it just for you, it may be fear of death, but for others, it may be fear of failure or heights or close quarters. And so if you have these constant prolonged thoughts like that, there may be um, it may not be something specific about death. It could be just this 
intrusive thoughts that won't go away. Mm -hmm. And that's where a licensed therapist or medication could help in that area. Right. I think there's a combination of things that yeah. have to happen. Let's let's make a little separation just because I think it's a significant <laughs> separation actually. There is the fear of death, meaning what's going to happen on the other side of this life. Mm -hmm. But there's also the fear of the process of mm -hmm. dying. And yeah. so I think I could relatively confidently say, I don't really have a fear of death in the mm -hmm. sense of once the process is done, because and again, that's where our faith has come in and then mm -hmm. we've been uh, promised and reassured many times over, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to get on the other side. But the actual process, I think if someone yeah. were to look at me and say, oh, I don't have any fear of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> The process of dying, whether it's dementia over a long mm. period of time, whether it's cancer, whether it's painful, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all of these different things, like your body is designed uh, to experience pain in a way to protect you so that when you are experiencing yeah. pain, that you can uh, stay away from that. And okay. so it's that whole idea. Don't interrupt me I'm yet. Sorry, I see you. you're chomping at the bit. No. You, you're going to try to get me, mm -mm. but I've got you already. Mm -mm. Pain is hard. Pain is hard, and so it's that fear mm -hmm. of the dying process mm -hmm. um, that makes a lot of us like um, hesitant to even mm -hmm. want to pursue understanding more. Okay. So All right. I have a question for you. Yeah. This is one of those what if questions that you get in these games, right? Would you rather? <laughs> would you rather? Yeah. <laughs> so, what if one of the options in would you rather is that you could find out how you were going to die? Would you want to know? I've been asked this question before. Well, do you want to know how you're going to die? Yes. Um, probably <laughs> not. Because, uh. you know, chances are, there's a high percentage chance that there's going to be some level of pain or agony yeah. with it. And I and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. And so then you yeah. kind of handicap yourself. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, like I, I would say, no, I'd... Be, it's like people knowing their their death day, right? Uh, right, you yeah. Because there's been those movies before. I forget mm -hmm. their names, but there's been a couple of those movies before where you know the day you die. Yeah. And like you are in that day before or something like, oh my gosh, that would be so freaky. But now if yeah. I, if somebody could say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what? you're going to die in your sleep. <laughs> I would love to be told that. Like if, if they could say, yeah, then I would want to know that so because you, I could be just yeah. like, yeah, you know, oh that's my cool. Gosh. But, but again, I don't want to know yeah. if it wasn't so, that. So, okay, don't judge us, okay? But we just did a family movie night the other night. And, and uh -huh. again, we've got teenagers, older teenagers. And so we watched The Book of Eli. Mm -hmm. And that we had seen the movie before and there there's some violence in there and stuff. But it, it really was intense about the whole idea of like a nuclear holocaust and just mm -hmm. really our world kind of turning back into something really evil and ugly. And and the whole void of truth and God's word was in there. So it had a lot of biblical undertones. Right. But, you know, the point and, and I don't want to give away the movie, but there's somebody in the it's movie. It's been out for a long time. So <laughs> at this true. point, if you haven't seen <laughs> It. <laughs> That's true. It's not a new yeah. reveal. But um, one of the people in the movie is told that they're not going to die until they accomplish the task right. by God. And so like knowing that, mm -hmm. like they're getting shot at and, and, you know, attacked. And it's like to know that you're going to be OK, like although there was some pain involved, but. That's well, it, it is interesting because it, this the civilization is basically um, destroyed and our anarchy mm -hmm. uh, basically becomes the ruling way. And so anarchy is whatever I want, I'm mm -hmm. going to do. And so it's the mm -hmm. guy with the biggest gun or the most power or the most influence becomes kind of the, the running governor. And so that's a scary thing. And again, mm -hmm. so at that point, there is a quest for something that's greater. Yeah. And that's where yeah. the book of Eli book comes of Eli. in. So. so whether you're a Christian or not, I mean, we can, we're can we all going to experience death unless you are Elijah or Enoch in the Bible who were taken up to heaven without death. Yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> so uh, there's a pretty much of a 100% chance that we're all going to experience the same thing. Yeah. And so there are many reasons that people choose to be a Christian. Uh, so, 
um, some it's because they want the better life. They want to honor God. They want his forgiveness or his mercy. But then there's a lot of people who want this hope to reconcile death in their mind and that there's no... uh, they don't have to fear the end because mm-hmm. God has promised us that there is eternal life, life after death. And so um, for me, that brings me peace. Mm-hmm. You know, does yeah. it bring you peace? Yeah. I mean, I, and I think that's, uh, it is not, well, I, I'm not theologically going to be sharp enough on this. It's not the only reason to have faith because we've talked about the other, it's, mm-hmm. it's a better way of life. There's, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, faith has a lot of faith. <clears throat> I'll say the Christian faith gives us a lot of reasons to have the Christian faith. But one major one is just the uh, settledness mm-hmm. and hopefulness <clears throat> that it gives you on the other side. Yeah. And I don't want to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, you and I have known people who have, um, have had terminal cancer, um, mm-hmm. and your mom recently, you know, passed away um, back in 2022, and we didn't do, we didn't know her day mm-hmm. of death, right? That was coming, but we knew that it was coming, right? And so, one thing that happens, I think, is just um, people have a sense of urgency, mm-hmm. and that urgency is I need. To, I need to get things done. I need to get things right. I, I need to accomplish mm-hmm. this. I mean, that's... Is that a that, bad thing? N- no, not at all. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, um, that whole idea is we know death is a big deal because mm-hmm. people do see it as a final. And so it creates an entire different mindset. That's, mm-hmm. you know, you get the idea of a deadline. You know, in mm-hmm. other words, after this point, <laughs> there's nothing on no the other intended. side. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, um, and mm-hmm. so from that idea that there is a deadline, you have all of these mm-hmm. other things that come of it, like bucket list, mm-hmm. you know, uh, things we want to get accomplished, something, mm-hmm. the legacy I want to build, mm-hmm. right? And so so there's a lot of motivation and urgency that comes yeah. from just the awareness. Yeah. And, and of course, the more it's brought closer to you to see mm-hmm. like, oh, you're given six months, yeah. the sense of urgency um, becomes much greater. And so I think it's just important that yeah. people don't joke around with that. Like if you found out you were going to die in two weeks, I'm pretty sure you would change yeah. just priority list. Your priority list in yeah. the next two weeks. Yeah. And I, as you're talking, I'm thinking of the scripture, and I forgot to add it in our notes about um, where we talk about that he comes like a thief in the night. And so we've got to be ready. Mm-hmm. We can't sit back on our hands and think we've got 70 years or 40 more years or whatever. Like we've got to be prepared. Right. And we've got to have oil in the lamp, it says, you right. know. And so we've got to make sure that we are um, prepared for if it's today or next year. Hun, some of my, and I used to be in charge of funerals and um, the work that I did at the church, local church. And I will tell you some of the hardest funerals Mm -hmm. were those that just wanted to use our building because it was the biggest space maybe Mm -hmm. for a teenager that lost took his life or um, a favorite, you know, local teacher that died suddenly. Um, And I will tell you that some of the most, some of the most difficult funerals were those where this in their mind was all there was. Yeah. Well, I guess we're done now. I guess we're done. And, and the grieving that went on because they didn't have anything hopeful for what that next life looked like or seeing that favorite teacher or that loved one again, a parent, and it's it's sad versus a, a funeral of someone who does believe that there is a life after death and that they do have hope and mm-hmm. eternal life in the promised land. Like, man, there is a different peace that comes when you are celebrating and gathering. And, and again, we can lament together. Yes, we miss them. Yes, we're sad they're gone, but we don't have to grieve like those who have no hope, the Bible mm. says. And I think it's a... Uh... It's a greater reach to be, I'll just say, mm. atheist or agnostic in this view than it is to have a faith. And just put Christianity aside, just to have a faith of something beyond. Mm. And I say that because um, 
well before Christianity, there and you go to any culture, there has been processes of mm. dying and thoughts. Whether you, you know, mm-hmm. whether again, not to say right or wrong about any of the other processes of, or of faith, but people want people have dreams and visions mm-hmm. of what the other side is like. I think it's imprinted in on our DNA. Mm. And, uh, so for that reason, like I think it's a greater leap to say there's nothing because Mm. across the board no matter whether they've been educated or not Mm -hmm. cultures have developed some sort of ritual Mm. that then uh takes something past the just burial yeah i've had a client before who claimed to be agnostic Mm -hmm. and came in because of anxiety and we got to a stalemate because what i wanted to offer her is hope and help Right. She refused and rejected. And so it's kind of like, then I got nothing for you. Like if, if you're going to tell me there's nothing after, then this fear of dying and this fear of death does seem pretty final, doesn't it? And it seems pretty bleak. And so, um, I was sad and I pray, I continue to pray for her. I can see her sitting in my office, um, as we speak and, and I continue to pray for her that somewhere the seeds were planted Mm -hmm. of a hope of something greater that she can find that peace and that joy in. And I I hope someone else gets to water that. Yeah. I I really, I have a hard time comprehending, um, why you would not want to create a level (laughs) of hope. I mean, Mm -hmm. I, you know, this goes back a little bit to the Pascal's wager of the idea of, Mm. well, you know, if, (laughs) if I believe in God and there is no God, uh, what do I lose? If you believe Mm. that there is no God and you die and there Mm. is a God, Mm. what did you lose? So it's the whole idea of, Mm. if you might say, well, you're just fooling yourself by creating this artificial hope because you think that there's life after death. What do I get to lose? What do I have to lose? (laughs) Right. If, if it's created hope to get me up out of bed Mm -hmm. and live another day, then and that in itself, again, and I'm not dismissing the, the, uh, the many other things and attributes of Christianity that we, mm. we enjoy and benefit from, but if it's just that, yeah, that is plenty. Okay, so I'm going to put a disclaimer in here, though, hon, because I do know of Christians who have this fear of death mm. but would yep. say, I believe in Jesus, I believe in heaven, so what's wrong with me? And so that's where we go back to the whole anxiety and depression sure. disorder, okay? Because it could be just fill in the blank. It could be cats. <laughs> it could be planes. Mm-hmm. And so you got to look at your triggers and what is it that's triggering and, and get with a professional because, man, there could be just some underlying medical chemical imbalances in your brain because that's where we see a lot of folks Mm -hmm. come into us and say, what's wrong with my faith? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me? Because I believe in God. So why do I still have this fear? And that's where we can really say, okay, if you do believe in Jesus, if you believe in heaven, you have this hope, then it's it's probably a, a more of a mental health disorder that can be, mm-hmm. you know, manifest itself in all different kinds of fears and phobias that we are going to handle from a medical clinical point of view. Right. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm nodding yes and no. I mean, a lot of that. So even if you have anxiety, okay, mm-hmm. even if you have an anxiety disorder, um, you can develop phobias, mm-hmm. all right? And phobias are irrational thinking patterns, right. okay? Irrational, they're illogical. So even if you get a medicine, as all that does is help to stabilize, you have to change the thinking right. pattern, and that's the cognitive behavioral practice therapy. Right. So so just getting on a medicine doesn't no. take away the anxiety. No. You have to actually re-pursue, well, how am I thinking, and how do I mm-hmm. start challenging my thoughts? You're and right. so that's where phobias really right. get broken down. Talk therapy is part Part of that but what i'm saying is don't look at somebody and say you just need to pray it away is what my right. point is right no yeah is because there's you, a lot of times more needing to work to be done yeah so huh, let's talk about this so let's put everything else mm-hmm. aside and let's mm-hmm. talk uh about why uh or, or the benefit of approaching death through the christian perspective mm, okay yeah. through the christian perspective and again we, we've already qualified like well why Mm -hmm. we would do that. Um, And we think in large part, it's written in our DNA that that we all strive for something more. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's even the atheist seems to do some pretty strange different things to remember um, Mm -hmm. they're dying. So, but, but, but here's the first point, like we keep talking about death being the end. Mm. Nope. And 
one of the things that Christianity gives us is it's not the end. And in mm -hmm. fact, in many ways, it's the beginning. Yeah. And so it's not where everything is done. It's mm -hmm. maybe just done in a physical sense or done how we can recognize it with our five senses. But it's way, way, way greater than that in terms of the mm. opportunity to live on. And so yeah. just that first thing is that Christians do not believe that death is the end. Mm. And so this is why even when you can see um, the loss of a little baby mm. and and the tragedy of that is an unexplainable in so many cases, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm not going to sit there and try to tell you that it all makes sense when yeah. a two-year-old innocent baby um, dies or is killed. But you will see those parents make statements about, and I will see you again. Yes. Actually, and I've had a client who lost a child very, very young and uh, a, a, a very sudden tragedy. And they came to us in despair mm -hmm. and they had no hope of seeing them again until they started to learn about the Christian faith and about the hope of heaven and about being able to see their child again. And that led them to seek the Lord and to mm -hmm. have a personal relationship with God so that they could see their child again. And so it is a transition into a new life, an eternal life, when there is no more pain, no more sorrow. And so that hope is what keeps them going. Now, do they still grieve the loss of their child? Yes. But man, if you could give this hope to a child Mm -hmm. that even when they lose grandma or their sibling, that they're going to see them again. There is the hope of heaven. You've given that child something to hang on to. Right. So they don't have to have that fear. There is a great little book out there called The Invisible String, and we have it in our office, and I've used it with children before. But when they experience death, that we kind of help explain that to them, that that, that person doesn't go away, mm -hmm. but there's still this invisible string to them. And again, our little guys are concrete thinkers, so they need something concrete. Right. But again, it's a story to help them remember that they're in heaven, they're going to see him again, and that death is not the end. I think it's important that this is not just Merle and Linda and I saying that scripture yeah. is is filled with things that speak of uh, of eternal life, okay, mm -hmm. and life after death. In Romans 6, 22 and 23, it just says, but now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves to God, you have the consequences of a holy life, mm. and the outcome is eternal life. Mm. The wages that sin pays are death, but the God's, but God's gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, um, so there is there is a permanence of death, okay, um, but we can be freed from that to get the eternal life. And so mm -hmm. this is just one place where we are given a promise right here. Yeah. And so since we have the opportunity to be in the presence of God at our death, we actually have a reason to be excited, yeah. right? He's meeting us there, experiencing everything that is perfect and holy, no more pain, like I mentioned, and suffering, dancing and worshiping and celebrating God. First John 2 Verse 24 and 25, as for you, what you heard from the beginning must remain in you. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, you will also remain in the relationship to the Son and our Father. This is the promise he, he himself gave us, eternal life. Yeah, so mm. just think about that for a second, okay? The idea that in human understanding and terms, we talk about God being all everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, omniscient, and, and, omnipresent, yeah, like, omnipotent. And, and so you get to actually come mm -hmm. and experience whatever God is in his full glory and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, up till that point, we nobody sees the face of God. Like mm -hmm. we can only, we can only give some limited comprehension mm -hmm. of what God is, but you are going to get to experience and get clarification on exactly what that mm. is. And so just that is exciting. Yeah, we can trust in God's promises. I go back to that book of Eli, the movie. He was actually blind. And he at one point said, I walk by faith, now not you by ruined sight. It. I know, now you ruined, ruined it. Movie, that, our daughter got all the way through it. She said, <laughs> was he blind? <laughs> It, that was so but he fun. walked and he and he had such confidence because he trusted. He didn't have doubts or fears. He trusted and relied on God and his promises. And the Bible is mm -hmm. full of God's promises from from death about death, about eternal life. These promises give us hope and comfort, and we can walk confidently and walk by faith and not by sight, even in the face of death. 
And that brings me great hope and peace. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, gets us to our next point. Mm -hmm. This, now because we've had these thoughts and Mm -hmm. these new understandings of how to look at something, now it's kind of like, the light switch has been turned on. I'm no longer afraid of the dark, yeah. okay? My anxiety has now been cast away. And so when we are dealing with people that struggle with the unknown, the best way that we get through that is to make it known. Mm. So we turn the lights on for people, you know, and mm-hmm. that's called exposure therapy. That's where mm-hmm. we we take somebody who's afraid of heights and we slow them, get them up to the, uh, an exposure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we So this is... Now, us exposing people to what God's word says yeah. and what you're going to see on the other side. And so it's at that point where the anxiety starts to go, hmm, yeah. n- not so bad. In fact, pretty awesome. Yeah. That's why we can talk about the idea of actually having excitement, yeah. excitement in death. And that's where you hear these mm-hmm. phrases like, we will be dancing in the street. We will mm-hmm. be celebrating all night long. Like, well, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Knowing God's promises gives us that peace and that joy. Second Corinthians 5, 6 through 8 says, So we are always confident because we know that while we're living in the body, we're away from our home with the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. huh? We're confident and we would prefer to leave the body and to be at home with the Lord. Like he's telling us it is worth the wait. Mm-hmm. You, you will love it here. I can't wait for you to get here. There's a song. Oh man, I wish I could remember it. Um, it, it talks about that. I think it's a country song. It says, <laughs> um, I can't wait for you to get here. Mm. Basically, it's somebody in heaven saying, you're going to love it here. Yeah. I can't wait for you to get here. And so we don't have to be afraid of that next life, that eternal life, when we have our confidence and put our trust in the Lord. There's been many, many, many uh, people who have studied and done work on near-death mm-hmm. experiences yeah. and or coming back to life experiences. Mm-hmm. And the vast majority will even make the statements that, you know, I, I, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was everything. And, and there were big parts of me that said, I don't want to go back, but maybe there was a message that said, no, your work's not done. You know, this kind of things. And the last thing, again, we're working now from the idea that we are Christian and this is why, but I I will move this more into us as adults and especially Mm -hmm. more mature Christians. How we handle the processing of death is also mm-hmm. a way that we represent our witness of mm-hmm. all everything that we've talked about before. Yep. If mm-hmm. I am of absolute fear of the other side of life, of, of the death, if I'm in fear, then what is that of mm-hmm. my witness? Okay. Yeah. And so one way that we can inspire people, and you see people doing this. I mean, uh, I have... Um, <clears throat> a friend right now who is just going through a very, very difficult time. But to see the inspiration mm-hmm. that they're giving and the messaging is beyond, like it's a faith that makes me go, I yeah. want some of that, Yeah. All right? And yeah. so our inspiration of how we, uh, our, our ability to inspire from how we handle the process, the processing of death means something to the people around us. I'm telling you, I, I as you're speaking that, hun, i I'm thinking of so many people in my life, faith giants mm-hmm. who did face death, who faced really bad diagnoses or, or trauma, you know, accidents. And man, every single one of them were just so inspirational to me. And I think of Paul that he writes in Philippians 1, 21. It says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that's how Paul, the Apostle Paul, lived his life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to fear death. I'm going to live each day to the moment. I'm going to have this urgency, right? Like, it could be my last, but I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm Mm going to walk by faith, and I'm going to live in Christ so that if today is my last day, then to die is gain. And I'm, I know it's going to be good. And when we live that way, it is inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Amen. Paul goes and writes the same thing in Romans, basically mm-hmm. the same idea, because yep. Paul uh, worked through his his salvation 
um, because he he thought he knew one way, and then it was constantly revealed to <laughs> mm-hmm. him another way, and it was through Christ. And he, he developed such confidence that there mm-hmm. are times that people might even consider a level of arrogance because he became so sold yes. out to it. And so in he, he says that in Philippians, but in Romans 14, he comes up with something that is simplifies mm-hmm. so much of this. It says, if we live, we live for the Lord. Mm-hmm. If we die... We die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we mm-hmm. belong to God. Yeah. And so that in itself says, you know what? The ways of the world are what they are. They change by the minutes. Mm-hmm. There's always something that we can be freaked out about. I mean, there's always going to be the latest headline that captures our attention, whether it's COVID or whether it's mm-hmm. climate change or whether it's the next disease. Like these things are not going to change. They yep. are going to continue to grab the headlines and create anxiety and fear. Yep. And so what Paul is saying here is, listen, live or die, we do it for God and with God, because he's the one that's going to guarantee our salvation on the other side that gives us our life. Yeah. I was just thinking about the poem called The Dash, and uh, it literally was has been read at funerals before. And a lot of times this is kind of where people go when they don't have a the Bible to, to kind of go to. But if you think of the dash is between your birth date right, and the day you right. die. What's going to be like in there. How you're living in the dash, you know. Um, and so I just want to have you think about that. Like what's your life going to reflect, whether it is, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 80 years, how many ever years are in between those two dates? Like how are you living that dash? And that's what God wants to see from us is a life that's sold out to him, surrendered to him, living for him. And that is going to bring us that peace and joy that we can only experience when we have a hope of something greater because 99.9% of us are going to die (laughs) (laughs) with the exception of the people that God takes us up and we could round that percentage up (laughs) even higher. Let's just call it a hundred. You know, and so how are we going to live the in-between time? And, And that's what God's calling us to do in faithfulness to him. Can I just say, Say, hon, our last thing here is just that word that you said is hope. And our job is not to not live in anxiety. Our job is to live with the fuel of hope. Mm. If I just live without anxiety, it just means I'm calm, okay? Mm. But I need something more than that. I need fuel or motivation to go Mm. out and do a certain work. And so uh, there is a very big difference there, okay? Just because I'm not anxious doesn't mean I'm operating in hope, Okay, so we're trying to get rid of the anxiety, but better than that, I want to live with an energy, a motivation, and that's the hope. Like mm-hmm. there's the reason why I'm going to do everything I'm going to do to, to live for God. The reason mm-hmm. why I'm going to do these, that's the fuel, yeah. and that fuel is what we call hope. And, you know, we, we've talked many, many times. The loss of hope is the last step mm. of deep depression that mm. people finally become suicidal in. Yeah. When they finally have no hope in anything, that's when anxiety goes through the roof mm-hmm. and that's when um, their desire to live ceases to exist. And so that hope is what keeps us rolling. Yeah, and so if you're a parent out there, can I just tell you, Merle and I have worked in the schools and the churches with children and adolescents for 35 years. And one of the saddest things is when our kids have no hope. And a lot of times it's because mom and dad have kind of disconnected from God or kind of drifted away from a faith or church home. And so the kids are floundering and they're filled with anxiety and fears and depression because they have nothing to hold on to, nothing to build off of, nothing to see in their Mm -hmm. future. And so please, please, mom and dad, the greatest gift you can give your children is a foundation of faith that they can find their hope in their future. And so please, if you don't know what that looks like and you don't know how to do that for your kids, reach out to us. That's what we do every day. And we would love to walk alongside you as parents, to walk alongside your children and their anxieties and their fears and help them find that peace and that hope that comes through a faith and an obedience and a belief in Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head with the whole idea of, you know, not only um, do we know that it's important to have faith so that our kids can learn that faith mm-hmm. and see how we can remain calm and direct it yeah. during difficult times. But the opposite is true. And this oh. is a, a very, very large reason mm. 
why we have so many upticks in depression and anxiety and yep. suicide because now we have parents that do not have faith and so because of that what they pass on to their kids is their faithlessness yes and okay? their anxiety and so so they're <laughs> passing on the anxiety and hopelessness to their kids not intentionally they don't no. wake up in the morning going i can't wait for my kid to be in great despair <laughs> okay that's not how it no. rolls but it is because of their ignorance or pride or whatever mm-hmm. roadblock came in the way that they have not allowed themselves to learn and live yeah. by faith. So they have very little to impart to their kids other than things yeah. like anxiety and confusion. Yeah. Or their own trauma, their own painful experiences. And so if that's you as a parent, get help for you so that you don't transfer those fears and anxieties onto your children, that you offer them and model for them healthy and hopeful experiences. Yeah. All right. So guys, <clears throat> difficult subject, yeah. uh, one we would all like to avoid. Mm. Um, but as you said, hun, nearly 100% <laughs> <laughs> is not avoidable, okay? And so it's it's stuff that we age appropriately deal with it with our kids, mm-hmm. um, but we as adults have to begin to wrap our head around it uh, for ourselves and how we're going to to teach and handle uh, that in our own life and in our family. So yeah. as you've said, hon, a part of our challenge this week is to wrap your head around the idea of how how have you processed the whole idea of death after um, you know the process mm-hmm. of after death? What happens to you and mm-hmm. How are you going to um, relay that to the people that you have in your life, like your kids or family mm-hmm. or friends? And so that would be our challenge. Again, if we mm-hmm. can help in that manner, uh, maybe you've been delivered some difficult news. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. there is somebody who's stated out somewhat of a, a time or terminal mm-hmm. limit on your, um, your time here on this earth. Um, you know, you've got to process this. Yeah. And so if we can help, great. If, if it's not us. Mm. Seek seek out a church. Yeah. Seek out a pastor, a priest, a preacher of sorts, and and start to just entertain the idea of where this hope comes from. Yeah, get some help. You're not alone. There is help out there. So we are so thankful for our sponsors, Casey's Outdoor Solution and Mixwell's Construction, for helping us um, speak these important messages on death and dying and and afterlife. And and so we just pray that this has been beneficial for you. Please share this show. Give us a five-star rating. Help us to get this messaging out because there are so many people walking around feeling hopeless, feeling overwhelmed, having this intense fear of death and dying. And they don't have to. We don't have to live in fear. And so we pray that you will help us to share that message of hope out there. So thank you so much for listening to Rock Solid Families Podcast, building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. Rock Solid Families wants to thank Maxwell Construction for sponsoring the Rock Solid Families podcast. For over 30 years, Maxwell Construction has been a leader in turning dreams into realities, building schools, banks, restaurants, and many other commercial and public facilities. Maxwell Construction has made it their priority to not just build buildings, but to build into their community. So if you have any construction needs, call them at 812-537-2200.